so as I teased about in the beginning of this episode, we have probably the coolest speedrunner I found ever. And I'd almost say that he's a niche, but he's not quite because you have like a quarter million views on your YouTube video. So um, Carl, say hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you on. And it's funny because... I'm your first interviewer, and you're our f- first interviewee for Radio 64. Yes. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah. So before we get into like um, some of the set questions that we have out for you, tell us a little bit about yourself, like um, where you're from and uh, maybe what your occupation is or whatever else you want to tell the world. Yeah, I'm from Brisbane, Australia. And uh, I guess speedrunning related, I've been speedrunning since 1999, which is uh, coming up 16 years, which is, wow, wow, that's a long time. (laughs) So I'm 29, so I I started it when I was like 13. Uh, And I I still do other stuff too, like I I work a full-time job, um, which is, I won't get into that, it's just a standard boring job. (laughs) Uh, Not as fun as your video a, game life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a girlfriend and <laughs> I, have, I have a social life and stuff like that as well. So I, I, I do really well to, to juggle all of it. Oh, juggling. Cool, cool. Well, yeah. Um, I got to say that it's not very often you would find a speedrunner that just seems to have so many different interests in the world. So it's kind of fun that, like, looking around on your YouTube videos that you have on your channel, that we'll, uh, we'll link in the show notes for everyone to check out, along with, of mm. course, the speed run we're talking about. That you had, like, a lot of piano videos, and you did a lot of original music. That was really, really awesome. So uh, what inspired you to, like, uh, start writing songs before we can go into, like, the speed run, just to get to know you more, like? Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know what it is about my personality, but I get really addicted to things. I'm I'm super competitive and uh, I want to be really good at everything I do. Mm-hmm. So I tend to have periods. So uh, around 2007, 2008, I got really into music. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've played guitar since I was 12 as well, and uh, I got really good at that. But then I do, I just go, go, go through periods like a couple of years where I'd really get into writing songs and and practicing guitar and, and getting really good at that, and then it sort of fades out, and then I get into something else so whatever that is like speed uh, running <laughs> yeah speed running uh juggling uh dancing self-development and and learning stuff like that sweet so i'm 29 now so every couple of years i'll really get into something new so i've sort of a what do you call it i've amassed you know a fair few skills so far well, and i really you. want to continue that trend i think everyone should learn as much as they can and everyone should get into different things and and do what they can to to improve as a person, basically. That's very admirable, and I think that you seem like the type of person who, once they start a craft, they really get into it and perfect it. So, Jack, why, yeah. don't, you, why don't you start off with um, some of the questions that we have set out for you, because I'm really itching to hear about like the inner workings of the mind of a super speedrunner, as I'm going to dub you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I watched the um, the video yesterday, so it's still sort of fresh in my mind. And what, like watching it all, you seem to know exactly what to do and what sort of glitches to play, like to play into. And so, how many yeah. takes did it actually take for you to sort of um, to get this final run? Because you did seem pretty surprised that you were able to do it in like fifty minutes. So have you had, have you already tried doing this triple speed run before? Or? Yeah, I was actually uh, surprised when it happened. Obviously, there's a lot of planning that goes into it beforehand. Yeah. So it was actually only my second fully fledged attempt. Oh. Um, but the a- thing add is, all three of them at once, or yeah, exactly. Well, let's list yeah. off the games too, because we said it in the beginning. But um, uh, yeah, Carl, I'll just have you say, have you say it in in uh, your lineage? How would you call these three games? Do you have the abbreviations at this point? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Sorry. I'm sure it's O O P. Or OOT for Ocarina Oh, yeah, Tower, OOT, Mario 64, and GE. GE? I, never, I haven't heard that for GoldenEye yet. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, everyone calls it GE. Uh, I thought it was 007. Every- yeah, I thought Jack, well, like what Jack was saying. But that's not very specific, I guess, to like the game itself. Sorry, I, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. But the thing, yeah, it, it did take two tries, but that's discounting the months and months of preparation that went into before that. So... Yeah, to actually do it, uh, it happened relatively quickly. 
but it was a lot of preparation before that and mentally going through it um I, I didn't necessarily need to have all three games in front of me in order to prepare the run um so it's mostly uh leading up to it i was obviously already very good at goldmar because i've been speedrunning that since 1999 oh right. okay so that part of it i was really good at right. the thing the thing that happened last year was uh i needed to get good at zelda and I need to get good at Mario 64 as well. So that was the, the chunk of the preparation that happened last year. Yeah. Well, so you said this is your second time doing all three at once. The first time was a sort of you just going through it slowly and, and, and sort of getting the crux of it. Because the, what, what I noticed as well is that you sort of knew how long the intros would go for for each of the games. And then so like Zelda has a, the Ocarina of Time has a huge introduction, but then sort of GoldenEye you can sort of get more straight into it. So yes. is that sort of what you were figuring out, like the specifics or? No, that was prepared in the months leading up to it. Okay. But that's what I said. I mean, with that kind of run, you do have to prepare what you're going to do and when. Yeah. So it's hard to just sort of do it on the fly. So like I said, even though I wasn't necessarily playing the games, I was sort of going through it in my mind. Yeah. Um, because I was, by that stage, I was had a pretty good idea about how quick I was going to be on, on each game, so I could sort of plan it. Just like uh, you would plan an interview or something. You would, you know, I'll do this then, and then I'll do that. And then at the end, it just came down to actually doing it and making it happen. Yeah, yeah. And so what actually inspired you to do um, the three games at once and these three games uh, specifically? Well... It was actually an idea borrowed from another speedrunner. Okay. So in, in the GoldenEye community, uh, there's some other speedrunners that I, that I have as friends. And one of them is a pretty big name in sort of the Twitch world and, and speedrunning, Ryan White Goose. He actually first had the idea of running GoldenEye, Zelda, and Super Mario 64 back-to-back. Uh, and him so, and a couple so of one after the other. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So using using one console basically, uh, you would yep. run run a game, then you'd take it out, put another one in, and, and run that. Which I'm sure is pretty fun with the cartridges as touchy as they are. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you probably have gotten pretty used to them blowing into blowing the in it to, get to work. Yeah, blowing into the bottom, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you know, barring that, I mean, um, but. I, I saw that he was practicing other games as well, and that really interested me because, I, as I mentioned before, my personality, I don't really like to just get stuck on one thing. And I, I sort of exhausted everything I, I wanted to learn with GoldenEye, so I was watching a lot of Mario runs, and I, I really liked how that game is run. Yeah. And if, and if you watch the Mario speedruns, the, the really good guys at it make it look amazing and uh, it just looks like it flows really well, and it looks really fun to to do. So I really started getting into Mario, and um, then I decided I was going to do a similar thing, which is play all three games back to back. But then I, I decided, or I came up with the idea of just running them all at the same time. Yeah. And then once I had that idea, I realized it, it's a super good idea. It's it's um, something that could be really interesting to a lot of people. Yeah. So as soon as I had that idea, I was like, yes, I'm definitely going to do this. And from then on, it was just a lot of practice, a lot of training into making it happen. Yeah. And so with that practice and training, did, did the point, so you spent months and months of preparation, when you actually sat down yeah. to do the actual speed run, was it all sort of in your muscle memory that you knew exactly what to do and when to do it? That's the goal. Yeah. So basically, uh, you would break the run up into really small chunks so uh 10 second 10 second um chunks for example with mario there's a lot of uh precise movements uh with mario and and zelda as well a lot of the a lot of the moves are really sort of they have to be perfect basically if you're a frame earlier a frame late they're not going to work uh so you have to practice them over and over and over and over and over again um, and that's what was really impressive to me watching you do uh, Super Mario 64 because I with with that one it seemed like you weren't using 
um, like as many glitches as like say Zelda, for example. Um, and it was really interesting to me seeing sort of how you knew exactly where to jump on the lava that would make you jump higher onto the next platform mm-hmm. to get the star that was there. Um, yeah, no, that was really impressive to me. So it seemed like you did have that down packed right away. Yes, and that just comes through um, practice, basically. And, yeah. and doing it so many times that you just sort of remember what to do and when to do it and, and how to do it. Yeah. It's just uh, before you learn it, before you start practicing it, it does seem a little bit overwhelming and, and it seems a bit crazy. But, but just like anything, when you practice it a lot, it just becomes a lot easier and your mind is able to sort of relax into it and yeah, for sure. Just sort, of, just sort of do it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, so we mentioned that uh, that you use glitches uh, to sort of get you through the the speed run, especially with Zelda. Um, what glitches did, did you discover yourself in sort of your experience with and years of um, of gaming, and which ones did you sort of learn from from other sources? Well, I would say almost all of them I didn't learn myself. Zelda yeah. has a has a huge community and a huge history. Oh yeah. Of speedrunners, so that that was that's been run since around the same time Goldeneye was run as well, and, and like I said, I I was primarily a Goldeneye runner up until last year. So by last year, most of the major glitches have been found. Um, yeah. So I, I was it was my job to basically learn them from other people, uh, watch videos, get advice. So I would stream uh, online while I was practicing and. And get someone to watch me, someone who is, is better at Zelda or Goldeneye, or not Goldeneye, sorry, but um, Zelda or Mario, and give me advice and say, you know, you're doing this wrong, you do it like this. And it's just basically a process for me was to learn them from, from other people and, and learn them from videos that have already been done. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Wow. wow. It's, it's really, it's, sorry, I was just going to say, it's really hard to, to actually come up with glitches these days because. The games are so fleshed out that that a lot of them had already been discovered, and nowadays it's up to people that that use emulators and really get into the game code in order to find these things. Yeah, and I'm I'm not yeah. a I'm not one of those guys. I'm, I don't look at game code or anything like that. So uh, it's going to be pretty tough for me to come up with anything new. Yeah, and uh, Mitch and I last episode um, we sort of mentioned how there was a secret room in um, a, a link to the past, uh, yeah. the Zelda game, um, with somebody who won a contest and they got their name in a room. But the only way that they found it was through sort of the emulators on the computer. So it's just funny how much yeah. you can find when you actually hack into the game code. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. where the majority of things are found. A- yeah. And if you look at the glitches yeah. in Zelda, they're so crazy. They're so, so weird that it's going to be pretty tough to discover them unless you're looking at code. It, to, to accidentally do them would be, the odds of that would just be astronomical. So it's, it's really yeah. the guys who are really, really looking into the game in that kind of way that really find these. Yeah. And then yeah, it's definitely. up to people, then it's up to the guys who are really good uh, skill-wise at the game to, to pull them off and make them happen. Yeah. You yeah. usually find on, on message boards, some, some guy who's looking at the code will say, hey, I found this weird thing, right? Can we, can we use it? And then the guys who are really good at the game just practice it and practice it and see if it can be done so that usually that's usually how the big ones are discovered yeah that's hilarious i remember there was a moment in the original portal game i don't know if you've ever played that carl but it was i have no oh okay well (laughs) essentially you were supposed to like puzzle way through um the game and you know what a portal is by i'm assuming um by only using a certain amount of portals to like beat an objective so what i would start doing is i would i don't know if this is really considered a glitch and this is the most i can really relate to like the craft that you do but um i would either start throwing the boxes which you're not really supposed to do in that game because it's not a it's not a physical throw game you're supposed to move like walk or i would start stacking up like the sentries that i killed uh, and like jump up to like levels like that and it was just so much fun so i can see like where you would get into like how can i cut down in this time how can i make this even better than anyone else i've seen do it and just like reinvent this entire genre of speed running for even a game as as we're saying, seasoned as Goldeneye. I mean, because I got to say, yeah. 
When I watch you play Goldeneye, I am the most impressed by that. Jack is most impressed by Mario 64. I can see why. But I think that there's a certain subtlety to what you do in Goldeneye because you just – you know where everyone is in every room. You know what locks yeah. to shoot. Yeah, that was the most impressive. So, I mean, I can really tell that that was like your main game that you really liked getting into in, in the beginning. So it definitely shows. Yeah. De- yeah, definitely. Uh, most people would say would be able to look at it and see Goldeneye as my my main thing. Especially all, all of the Goldeneye runners would be like, well, anyone who's sort of really into Mario and Zelda, the speed runners, won't necessarily be impressed with those runs. Uh, but Goldeneye was definitely one that, everything aside, was a good run. Well, that's interesting that you would say that people wouldn't be as impressed by like Mario 64 or uh, Ocarina's speedruns that you did. Uh, so then that begs the question, why didn't you perfect those to the highest umpteenth degree before releasing them? That would take a lot of time. Yeah? A lot of time. The, the, the video, when I made it, it was for people who weren't really into speedrunning. And I knew that you know, when they saw it, they'd be like, "Wow, this is this is crazy, right?" It it was it was more of a an artistic thing. Mm. So I wanted I wanted to make a video that people could watch who weren't into speed into speed running that they would just really enjoy and and sort of be impressed by. When it comes to like the really subtle nuances of running the games, it's the payoff lessons, I guess. Uh, so I could have really practiced Mario more and kept getting into Zelda, but it would be a smaller and smaller percentage of people who would actually really appreciate it. Right. And I had to balance how much time I'm going to invest in it, and because to get to get really good at Mario, you would have to spend an entire year and sort of devote your life to it. Uh, yeah. and, and same with Zelda. So luckily, I had done that with Goldeneye already. But yeah, it would have been. Would have been years for me to get really good at both. There's only uh, one one person that I know of who's really, really, really good at all three. Uh, a guy called Justin, and he's from Canada, and he's he's really super great at, at all three. Uh, he's probably the one person that could, if he was going to do something like this, uh, could beat the time. But aside from that, there's there's no players out there that are really, really good at all three. It's really difficult to do. Wow, so you're saying that like your friend Justin, if he was to take up the task, he'd kind of show you up and you know pick up all three and learn the skills from you specifically of how to triple run a game, you know, effectively, I guess, to uh, know when to pause, when to go to the Golden Eye, when to go to, Ma- go to Mario, and he could show you up still. Like there's still potential for you to grow um, in doing these triple runs, and you're you're kind of um, encouraging others to do that, right? Yes, he he has the skill to do it. In theory, but a lot of it's not about the skill, really. There's tons of effort that goes into actually making it happen and producing the video. So, for example, the months leading up to it, I was checking out online ads and and everything, looking for TVs because I had to get three TVs, and I didn't want them to be too big, so to take up too much room. So, I wanted them to all fit on this table I've got at home. And then I had to get three Nintendos. I had to get three capture cards uh, and sort of work out all of the logistics um, to do it. And that's a lot of energy, a lot of effort. And not everyone will put, put in that amount of effort um, to make it happen. So even though it could be done, it's, it's up to anyone who really wants to put in the time to do it. Time and money. Yeah, I'm sure. Because, I mean, I've tried to explore the world of capture cards that's an expensive and technologically advanced thing to do. I don't know the first thing about capture carding games, let alone old console games like Nintendo 64. I mean, that's just, uh, I'm sure there's a whole entire world of like technical questions that we can get into here of like, what the heck did you do to like, you know, set them all up so that the controllers didn't like tangle up and all that. Like, cause yeah. I just, I see your, I see your fingers move so fast between each. And um, there's, there's like a moment or two where you'll, you'll seem like and I do this too. And I'm playing really intense games. You'll like kind of wipe off your hand cause it got sweaty and you want to go back. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, that just must be fatiguing though. It, I don't know that I'd want to do too many more takes than just the two that you did. Weren't you just done after you, finished it and you were like okay they're all beaten that's the time <laughs> pretty much 
and, and especially because, uh, you know, every day for like uh, four months before that, I'd come home from work and sort of practice five, day, uh, five hours straight. Uh, and practice these games, and I was just really at the point where I wanted to just make it happen and and get it over with. Uh, and and even the run itself is really stressful because you could go, you know, forty minutes into the run and then something goes wrong, and it's just over. Yeah, which, which did happen though with your sound as well. Yeah, well, luckily it wasn't too detrimental. Uh, I'm not sure how it came through. I didn't. I didn't totally lose it on the the video. I don't think, but. The actual sound that I was experiencing completely went away. So, but luckily, uh, it wasn't too too much of a big deal at the time. I just yeah. had to deal with it, and I'm not sure what happened. Uh, one of the chords just decided to die. I think. Yeah, because I'm sure um, that was a also interesting setup to get all three TVs running through one. I'm assuming aux cord to your headset to make sure that all the sounds were working, so that you can kind of hear where you're supposed to be, and you know, I, I, just whatever you needed to do to like, oh, good, I've um, aimed my supersonic watch at that area, and I'm hitting the area I need to, right? Because yes. all those sound cues are important playing a speed run. I'm sure. Definitely. And like, what? Yeah. What? What about the? Um, I, I think the toughest uh, one to do, uh, glitch to do, is the one in Ocarina, um, where you, yes, have a half heart, you die to the spider. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the name right now, you probably remember. Um, and, and then you have to go back in that room and then do a back jump, like slice forward to like push yourself backwards and then you're all of a sudden fighting ganon that is so specific i've watched other speedrunners do it and i'm sure that like that alone was like the bane of your existence trying to get this ocarina uh you know speed run rolling wasn't it yeah because if that didn't work you'd be pretty buggered throughout the whole thing really yeah if that doesn't work the run's over mm. so yeah. that was that that glitch definitely can be done quicker than what i did but I decided uh, I was just going to take it really slow and make sure it happened uh, because it's definitely one of those things where it's do or die. Um, <laughs> and it's, and it's and really precise. It, you can muck up and then, you know. Exactly. Uh, and at that point, I wasn't going to risk it. It's like 30 minutes into the run or something like that. Yeah. A- and hands are sweaty, uh, shaking a little bit just due to the anxiety of getting it and and stuff like that, and the nerves are running through. And because the, the movements are so precise, it's, it's really hard to control. So it's, yeah, it's really intense, and I just wanted to make sure I, I actually got it. Well, speaking of glitches then, how do you respond to people who claim, as, I, as they often were on the, the comments section of your video, that this wasn't a true speed run because you were, quote, cheating, even though in the beginning, and as I agree with you, you say in your video, I have not used any cheats here. You haven't. You've used glitches. There's a, there's, there's a difference. So define difference. that difference yes. for our listeners so that, I mean, uh, we can kind of spread the good word about what you're trying to do here. Cheats are, you know, the things where you put in a code and become invincible or or something like that. I mean, I think in instinctively most of us know what a cheat is just by its definition yeah a glitch is something uh part of the 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 standard playthrough of the game something that anyone can do uh and it doesn't give you any sort of special powers it doesn't give you any um any unfair advantage basically Uh, and it's just sort of taking advantage of a flaw in the game um or a bad design or something like that And even though the game wasn't designed for that sort of skill, there is still a lot of skill in being able able to pull that off, you know? Well, it's harder than beating the game normally. (laughs) I'd say. It's it's a thousand times harder. I could casually play through the game a thousand times and not die. It it becomes like a joke. It's it's fun, but it's not difficult. Everyone plays through the game casually. It's not not a challenge. Um, Pulling off the, the glitches and pulling off the tricks takes a lot of practice and yeah. you don't get it every time and even the the best players in the world stuff them up it they're not something that you can just easily do they're not easier than playing through the game and the the point of a speed run is not hey look i did this cool glitch that's not the point um the point is hey i got to the end of the game in this amount of time 
and that's that's where the difficulty is. So it's not the the tricky the hard part is not doing all the glitches. The hard part, or even though they are hard, the hard the really hard part is doing all of the glitches quickly, um, in one go and getting to the end. Yeah, I'm sure. And <laughs> uh, we have we have a couple of funny questions for you just to um, wrap it up. That I'm wondering now. What do you do with three Nintendo sixty fours? <laughs> is this just? Yeah. Do you keep them? <laughs> uh, I, got, I think I got two in the garage, and um, I'm not actually using any of them right now. No, they're just sort of packed away. It's oh. it's a, it's a one time thing. You can't really you can't really do anything with them afterwards. Jeez, oh, that's so funny. And yeah, I mean, outside of like. Um... Anything speedrun, unless there's anything more that you wanted to share that we didn't get a question of um, about, like, what it's like to speedrun. I mean, do you have any statements about, like, what you accomplished here? My main goal was to create a video that a lot of people was able to view. Uh, so I really wanted big websites to, to post about it and, and stuff like that, which they did. So as, as far as that was concerned, I really achieved my goal there. You mentioned I got uh, quite a lot of views on the video. Yeah. And th- there are a couple of speedrunners out there who are really, really, really popular. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know any any of the really famous speedrunners. I do follow one that you might be familiar with by now. He's also from Australia, Worcester. He remind- Yeah, he sounds familiar. Pokemon speedruns is his main in Sonic. Yeah, I, d- I don't actually follow him myself, but I, I do know the name. Right, he's mostly on Twitch too, which I'm also surprised that you hadn't been doing yet, because that seems like a great community to really get into, to show off your hard work so people can watch you live doing what you're doing. Uh, Twitch? Yeah, I I was on Twitch, but um, I just haven't been recently, but I definitely was um, playing a lot online before, especially before doing the run as well. Yeah, because you you had um, a couple of people talking in your video too, which I found funny, because... I first thought it was something like Twitch, but I guess it was just uh, like a, a Skype call of friends, like watching this, this video stream that you were doing or something. What was that? <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, Mumble. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. No, what is it? It's like, uh, what about Vent? Vent Trillo? Mm, not yet. They're basically like Skype. They're, they're oh, just, yes, uh, actually, that yeah, that weird like uh, white-faced thing. Yes, and <laughs> everyone gets into a room and they can just talk to each other like a, a big group call. Right. Uh, so that's what we do. Like uh, you find, most of the communities have their own place where you can go there and and just chat to people. Yeah. So we just kind of just hang out there and and chat while we watch each other play. Well, how were they watching you play? What was what was that stream? It was on Twitch. Uh, oh, so you were doing Twitch? Yeah, I was doing Twitch. Right, it, was, right. it was all done on Twitch. I think I say at the beginning of the video, uh, it was done on Twitch, and I right. linked to my uh, Twitch page. Right. Yeah, well, I'm going to go check out some more uh, of your uh, videos, I suppose, on Twitch. And are there any that you would like to guide our listeners to go see that you've done and been really proud of? Not speedruns, but just videos in general, just anything. Yeah, uh, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, check out a few of the past videos. I mean, I, I do play a bit of piano when I write songs and stuff like that. Uh, there's nothing uh, huge on there at the moment. I'm definitely going to expand in the future and have some really exciting videos coming up. Yeah. Uh, so even if they just subscribe and and wait for the the next big one to come out, that'll be good too. Nice. So for the fans, so what is the um your YouTube channel? What can they search to to find it? They can search for my name, Carl Jobst, yep. K A R L, and then surname J O B S T. Cool. Wow, well, that's really interesting, Carl, that you've been able to carve your own niche out of the speedrunning community because I can't think of another triple speedrunner, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is at least the first to go viral. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of similar but not exactly the same things. So uh, I know with the Metroid games, uh, guys would try and beat two of them at the same time using one controller, uh, which I don't quite understand how that, that happens. Um, but this is the first time anyone, I think, has used three different consoles and and three different systems to to play them all at the same time using like three different controllers. So it's definitely an original idea, 
uh, and it might be a thing in the future. I'm not sure. Definitely, there was a lot of excitement about it, and 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 people really enjoy it, which is a good thing. But uh, oh, it does take a lot of effort. I, I was going to say, I would love to see a Metroid um, a speed run because Mitch and I at the moment are playing. Playing uh, through Metroid Prime for the for the podcast, and that those games are very strenuous and very long. So be, I'd, I'd love to see a speed run of, of Metroid. Sure. Well, I mean, there are plenty out there already. I, I don't think I'd personally get into it myself, but yeah. If if anyone is even enjoying a game that they're that they're playing at the moment, they should just do a YouTube search or a Google search for a speed run of that game because it's usually communities of of all of the popular games have a whole bunch of people who are really trying to sort of break it and um, complete it really quickly. And it's just really, really, really amazing what people come up with and what people do. And I, I just thought of uh, something else, too, that on top of all this, this is probably a very limited genre in terms of what games can be used to play for this, play play for speedruns, specifically because patches can be put out to avoid glitches like the Ocarina one where you can skip to Ganondorf, right? It just it seems like I haven't really seen too much of uh, glitch speedruns, at least any percent speedruns as they're um, often termed, that exist past the Nintendo sixty four Game Boy Advanced era. I can't really I can't really find too many that um really have anything going on like that. So um, yeah, do you do you have any thoughts about uh, what it's like that you know newer games would be able to be patched and thus fixed and not glitchable anymore like would would this ocarina right. glitch exist in current day allowing you to do this speed run well from what i've heard the creators actually know about the glitch and they leave it in there uh, i think the glitch can even be done on the newer ver- versions of the game as well oh you no kidding uh but uh, i've seen a lot of new games they when they first come out especially they are glitched and uh I know, for example, like Skyrim, which is a pretty recent game that has some insane glitches. Yes, it does. Uh, wow. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't sort of go browsing for all the new, the new games and check out the speed runs and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if if the majority of them have game breaking glitches that people manipulate to to do it. But, yeah. but it would really suck. It would really suck to spend. 100, 100 hours practicing a glitch and then to have it patched, uh, that would really, really suck. Yeah, well, I'm sure... So, I mean, <laughs> now I'm wondering if there isn't like this underground community of people who are um, harboring their original versions of games that weren't quite patched in production quite yet. I'm not talking like downloadable patch like we saw on Pokemon X and Y with the save glitch that was happening in Lumio City that was game-breaking. You know, like yeah. I'm talking like... Um, Oh, I don't even know. Let's just say if they were to give it Ocarina again in a in a new production, and then that new production line was to not have that Ganon glitch where you can skip to the end, that would have probably made the uh, the value to speedrunners of that original glitched full game more valuable. Mm-hmm. That's that's um, it's just uh, you're opening up my mind to all sorts of possibilities, Carl. So, um, <laughs> back to um, the one last fun question that I wanted sure. to shoot at you. I was wondering. If you had a single game that you could play, um, and put this in any hyper in any hypothetical you need to to make this work, but yeah, you're on an island, right? You have one game. That's the only game you can play. It's only like entertainment, essentially, that you're gonna have. What's it gonna mm. be? Very interesting question. I'm just actually tossing up between a game that I've sort of played in the past that I could get a lot of re- replay value out of or something recent that I haven't really played right? that I know I'm going to get a lot of value out of. <laughs> um, honestly, I'd probably say GoldenEye. Really? Yeah, mm. the reason is I could get... I know I know I could play the game for another 3,000 hours and, and uh, try to take it to the extremes. I mean, that's one game... That I know, I haven't yet sort of reached the limits, and uh, there's a long way to go with it. So I'd probably do that one if I ever got off the island. At least I would have something to show for it. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> if I, I would also like to bring recording equipment so I could record my times. Otherwise, <laughs> they wouldn't accept them on the on the rankings. Right. So Goldeneye, 
GoldenEye, with recording equipment, with an escape eventually to show the world your 3,000 hours of work on this game. (laughs) I got it. I like that. I like that. Well, Carl, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciated the unique perspective you had to the entire speedrunning community and it's um it's been a pleasure so uh thanks and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you in the future thanks a lot thanks for having me i really appreciate it absolutely yeah